probably have pretty much the same coat on. Like, like literally. Like, I think we have the same coat. I think we have the same coat. Oh Rachel reads to us, as all of you can read in the announcement, Rachel. So, Rachel says, what are your thoughts on Dr. Greg Hanley's approach to happy, relax, and engage in the possibilities of being successful in a public school setting? <gasps> also, the ideas of having students choose their interventions and success in the public set school setting. <laughs> Do you believe this is a true revolution in ABA, or have we always possibly, or have we just possibly found a more systematic approach to pairing? You said uh, a question. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to make a video on a question. Yeah, that's a four. question. That's, that's four. four. And like, I even said one to three sentences in my instructions. And there's oh, four. Well, and I'm passing this question off to him, at least parts of it, because it's more of his area than mine. So here you go. This is what happens when you have an expert on staff. Yeah. <laughs> hey, all right. So um, I believe the top was something about keeping people happy, relaxed, and engaged. Yes. Yes. It was. With, a, with, it was with Mr. Hanley. At, at a presentation that that's when the best sort of stuff happens. Is um... Although the words are a little different, uh, I would argue I agree. Uh, because you can't teach in an extinction burst. If they're cranky, pissed, and miserable, they're not going to care who you are or attend to you. Um, so his kind of thought is really about making sure your students are at a baseline, uh, happy, content, and engaged. Uh, because without that, you're not going to teach anything. Um, because they're not going to see the point. And they're most likely going to hate their current setting and hate you. Um, so <laughs> I think what he's saying is you have to make sure that the student is ready to learn. And uh, being ready to learn means you're having all your basic needs met. There's a structure in place that they understand how to get reinforcement and how not to get reinforcement. Uh, and at that point, you're able to build skills from there. Yeah. Um, and then how about choosing their own, students choosing their own interventions? That's something that I think is kind of cool. Uh, I That is one of the things we're supposed to be doing. I think what we have a hard time with is a lot of the learners we're dealing with don't necessarily have the skills to. Uh, just by age, skill deficits, you name it. Uh, but when given the opportunity, if students are able to guide the skills they're interested in, uh, that is the best level of informed consent and direction of therapy you're supposed to take. Um, you obviously guide, and they have to learn the things they have to learn, like math and reading and writing and all those pieces. But if they have the skill set to influence um, what they would like to do in their treatment, that is... That is the goal. If they start doing that, congratulations, you won. They're becoming an independent individual. And then you support where they want to go. Nice. Thank you. And yeah. do you believe this is a revolution in ABA? These new approaches from, say, Hanley. And I don't know if it's... Yeah, I don't know if it's a new approach as much as... I think people are starting to realize that these principles we teach are more intertwined and more complex than uh, how they're being taught. So to say that we use differential reinforcement and extinction and shaping and chaining and we make the nice, even, clean chapters and in life they're like this. Um, what they're saying is we have to be aware of learning histories and relative difficulties from their perspective uh, and guiding people through that. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a revolution. If anything, uh, this would be more of Skinner's idea behind radical behaviorism actually taking effect. Um, it's <laughs> The field has taken tell now to be like, oh, private events are neat. Um, and we're going, yeah, they are. Let's be mindful. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of the integration. You know, I think that's kind of what, the, what we get back to when we're thinking about that particular the revolution. It's not just about behavioral principles per se being applied in this context is about realizing that you're operating under them as well. And that in order to be an effective therapist, in order to be reinforced for your job, in order for your clients to possibly reinforce the work that you're doing, you might have to be mindful of all of these things. And that integration, I suppose, might be a little bit revolutionary to, to understand that we're being shaped as well. Um, instead of being like, we are the wielders of contingencies and we will change you. That's not necessary. I understand the, the principles. I yes. own all the actions. I own the words <laughs> and the world. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, so revolution, probably not. And the, the pairing thing, that's a whole... That's a whole term. So I think we'll skip the pairing part of the question, but good question. Thank you very much, Rachel. Cool. So yeah. Hope that helps. Yep. Bye.